It's about time. What's going on? Yo. Yo. Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is the Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. So Megan Thee Stallion was planning to release a remix of BTS's Butter that was supposed to come out on Friday, but in a new court filing, she says her record label is preventing that song from being released. According to these documents that were filed yesterday, she submitted a petition against her label, 1501 Certified Entertainment, and its CEO, Carl Crawford. She says they're preventing her from releasing the song. And so if she's not allowed to do that, she said it's going to hurt her on an international level. But now the judge has cleared for her to release that. So she's back to getting everybody ready for her song with BTS. I don't know the ins and outs of her deal, but I don't understand why they would block music from coming out. I mean, if the record streams and it does well, don't they get paid as well? Yeah, I believe it was something that he said that he didn't feel like it would be good for her image. It would do um, irreparable damage to her career. The label's not really involved anymore. And right now, it's just a piece of paper. Her, her career is doing well. She let her do her thing. And, you know, she actually sued them last year for preventing her from releasing her EP, Sugar. And she got a temporary restraining order. And she's still under contract, though. So Seems a little spiteful now. She also says that they're preventing her from releasing that. And it violates the rules that were outlined in last year's temporary restraining order. They can't prevent her from releasing music. Now, Carl Crawford wrote, even when I win, when I lose, I still win. Don't let that go over your head. And can a, a, a label do that just because they don't like the record? Because I read that they just don't like the record and they don't think it's a good look for her. But it's not that choice. They're not really in her career like that anymore. She don't F with the label. I mean, it's clearly yeah. her choice if they got some paperwork that says otherwise. Well, right? they cleared it, though. They let it go out. But they get paid regardless. So like what he said, yeah, when he, when he loses, he wins. Yeah, because if the record streams well, they're still going to get paid. But let her be her. Let her do her career. She's doing a great job of doing it. And how can you pick and choose uh, what may or may not work for an artist? Because it may be a record you don't like and you think it's not a good look, but it might blow up and be, the great, be a great exactly. look for her. It's just, a, you know, it's just music. And if it doesn't work, you know what? Put out another record. Well, it mm-hmm. feels like it's personal. Yeah. That's really what it is. All right, now Chloe from Chloe and Halle is going to make her solo debut on the VMA stage. So it's cute because the two of them, Chloe and Halle, have been together so much. But as of late, we see they've both been doing their own thing. And so now she has a solo album coming as well. They did reveal that she'll be performing individually. And uh, yeah, there you go. Chloe don't want to be dancing on the gram, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. They both, they I both mean, they dance both on the ground. Do, but, so the know. one that did the busted challenge and then everybody went crazy. I think they both did. She's the older one, all right? Yeah, she's the older one. The older one. So I love it, though. I love that. Mm-hmm. Like they, I, when I was interviewing both of them, they were in different places and they were like about to cry from not being around each other because they're so used to being together. What happened to that damn live action Little Mermaid movie that one of them was supposed to be starring in? That was, um, yeah, that was Hallie, but she did it. She was posting pictures and everything. So maybe we just haven't seen it yet. Mm. She's been working on it. I don't know. All right, now, Quavo and Sweetie, some people are saying they're back together. And there's rumors that they've been spending some quality time together. They broke up about five months ago. It was very public. Neither one of them have confirmed this, but people are saying that it looks like uh, they're spending some quiet time. So maybe the two of them are back together. You never know. And Busta Rhymes has been criticized over this anti-mask rant that has resurfaced. It was comments that he made uh, back in June, June 19th. He said it was his second show in front of human life in the last 15 months. And here's what else he said. This is my second show in front of human life in the last 15 months. COVID could suck a all these little weird ass government policies and mandates suck a d- by trying to take our civil liberties away. No human being is supposed to tell you you can't even breathe freely. F- your mask. I come from a time where before I used to even want to holler at a chick, I used to have to do shit with my face to let her know that I'm into her. All of that energy gets blocked when your mask is on. <laughs> why, why did that go viral yesterday? I like, don't know. Like everybody be talking about Some agendas June. being pushed. Like like that was clearly weaponized for something yesterday. Mm-hmm. Like why? I don't know. You know how things resurface on yeah. on social media and then it just goes viral. Well, that was one of those things. Listen, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but we got to be self aware enough to know when our opinion could be dangerous. When it comes to masks or vaccines or mandates, whatever it is, we simply don't know. Like we know there's a disease out there. Right. People are absolutely getting the disease. People are dying from the disease, and to tell people not to protect themselves from said disease is socially irresponsible. And what I would ask, uh, Buster, is what's the other option? If if you're saying f masks, well, then what? Just don't. Just be out here raw dogging yeah. air, potentially getting sick. 
Like, yeah, that's it. No, that's not the way. <laughs> like, like, and by the way, if he feels that way, cool. But that, you know, that's that's his. Don't thing. tell other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, don't wear masks. But, but I also, you know, I don't agree with what Buster says, but. You know, dealing with the CDC and everything they say is kind of difficult because they say something different every time. I don't care. Remember about when the they CDC. said double mask up one time? Remember they was double I mask up? I do remember. Up. I remember when they said don't wear a mask. But guess what? I don't care about the CDC. My thing is, we know that it's something out there, so we have to protect ourselves against it in some way, shape, or form. So if it's not mask, what is it? Mm-hmm. If it's not staying home socially, you know, what is it? That's just, what I would want to know. Just don't breathe. I mean. All right, now Stephen A. Smith, he is uh, going to be having rotating guests as his host on ESPN's First Take as Max Kellerman is leaving. He's going to be doing a, a, actually a larger radio role, and so now we'll get to see how that goes. So First Takes, uh, they have not detailed the changes that are going to be made, but they said the new format is expected to feature a series of co-hosts, and that will be revealed soon. So we'll I, be able to see that. I like Max on First Take, but I, I have no problem with the revolving co-hosts because I do like to see Stephen A. Smith debating against different people <laughs> every day. I do. And Stephen A. Smith is dope at radio. I did radio with Stephen probably about 15, 16 years ago. Stephen we did. A. Smith is a dope talent, morning, period. He's a beast. Another station, and he's dope. He's dope. And he also just guest hosted Jimmy Kimmel Live, and so that's one of the many people that have been stepping in and as a sports. substitute during Kimmel's uh, summer sabbatical. Yeah, he has a his own show. He was able to talk about everything. He, he where he dope. actually right now does interview people that are not even in the world of sports as well. So yeah, I was on that show. That's on, on uh, the ESPN, ESPN Plus. ESPN Plus, yeah. Mm-hmm. Looks like he's gearing up for his own talk show at some point, yep. like a late night show. And now he does have four years left on his five-year, $60 million contract with ESPN. But you can see what that ultimate goal is. And they're saying that he did want Max Kellerman off first take for years. It wasn't personal, according to sources. They said Max Kellerman has a smartest guy in the room attitude and Smith went it more of a debating challenger and wait a minute Stephen A. Smith don't have a smartest guy in the room attitude <laughs> you have to have that to be on those type of shows don't you like you got to go mm-hmm. on there with confidence yep. and and absolutely make people believe you know what you're talking about and they do it's not like Max and Stephen don't know what they be talking about all right well that is your rumor report all right now we got front page news next what are we talking about yes let's talk about Afghanistan and Joe Biden says we are going to keep this deadline all right we'll get into that next it's the breakfast club good morning 